Hello, this is James Cook, Assistant Professor of Social Science at the University of Maine at Augusta. And today for uh, the Undergraduate Social Network course at UMA, we're going to be talking about the principle of garbage in, garbage out. This is a, a computer science term which is meant to represent the problem that a computer program uh, simply follows an algorithm, a set of steps to go through a set of computations. If you provide it with good information at the beginning of your process, you'll get a, a good result. If you give it nonsense, if you give it information that has some problem related to it, uh, if you give it garbage, in other words, intentionally or unintentionally, you'll get a nonsense result. This is important for social network analysis because programs like UCINet uh, will take information that you have, they will give you an answer to your question, but unless you pose the question just right in terms of the data that you provide UCINet, you may not uh, get a sensible result. So I want to talk about this uh, in the week that we have now facing us because you are on the precipice of working with some real-world two-mode social network information which is great uh, it's a, a good opportunity uh, for for you when you're thinking about uh, committees and membership and overlaps uh, but it's really important that the information you capture is accurate on top of that you've just finished a few series of homework in which uh, you've used UCINet for the first time and you've represented some family networks. There were some common problems that I saw in the homework and I responded to each of you about those problems. One of those was when you were using UCINet the appearance of double nodes, uh, that is nodes representing uh, one person in two times in two different colors. Sometimes there were these mystery nodes, just these dots that appeared that were unconnected to anybody else. Sometimes you noticed these, sometimes you didn't. Uh, they represent errors. They represent a problem. They are, to use another phrase, the canary in the coal mine. If you see oddities happening, chances are you have odd data. I want to go through UCINet and show you a few ways that you can get nonsense results when you're uh, depicting a social network. And in each of these three ways, the problem is um, either with the tool that you choose uh, somehow being inappropriate, or the original data having a problem uh, in terms of its format. So I want to show you right now, uh, you should be looking at a UCINet spreadsheet. This should be familiar to you. And this is uh, an adjacency matrix that represents uh, one mode ties, very simple, between Alice, Bert, Carl, Donna, and Earl. If I save it as is, and I exit uh, UCINet's spreadsheet editor, and I move on to NetDraw to visualize it. And I correctly choose UCINet data and regular network data. I will obtain a result that hopefully makes sense. And here it is. Let's take a look. Okay. In this network, we see we could lay it out in a number of ways. Okay, we could apply it as a circle. Here's a circle. We could apply it as a line. We see that there are a number of connections. All of these connections are reciprocated. And if you go back in the video, you should see that they should be. Um, because every time, for instance, that Carl is tied to Earl, Earl is also tied to Carl, everything looks good here. 
but there are some ways I can make it look bad. And I'm not just simply referring to a choice of layout that might be random. I'm referring to the idea that uh, it's possible to generate nonsense. What's the first way I can do that? Well, I can go to NetDraw, and I can choose the wrong option. I can say I'd like to open a UCI Net data set. Oh, but I'd like to open a two-mode network. Now, you should know from the first chapter and also from this current lecture what two-mode data is. It's data in which uh, there are two kinds of social objects, usually people and groups, sometimes people and classes, sometimes people and their um, uh, different uh, characteristics. But what I just described to you is not two-mode network data. It's one-mode network data. What happens if you click the wrong option? Notice down here it's telling me under types of data that I should be looking now for two-mode network data. This is wrong. But UCI Net will allow you to do the wrong thing. So I'm going to choose it. the same file, and I'm going to display it. Whoa. What's happening now? Well, if I look at the properties of the labels and I increase their size to something pretty large so that you can see it, and let's set that as the default, as a matter of fact, you can see there are two Berts. There are two Donnas. There are two Alice's, two Carl's, and two Earl's. Many of you had this problem. Some of you may have had this problem because you picked the wrong option. When you're telling UCI Net to, that you have two node data, what you're saying is that your rows and your columns are not the same entities. And what UCI Net is doing in its Net Draw module here is then saying, okay, if this is two mode data, uh, well, let's see. Clearly, the Donna in the column is a different object than the Donna in the row. And I'm going to show ties of affiliation. And I'm going to do it through different colored nodes to represent different kinds of objects, which is all well and good if that's really what's going on. But if it's not, you get what? Nonsense. Okay, that's nonsense possibility number one. Nonsense possibility number two can happen if we open up that uh, file. And we let our cat walk across the screen. Here goes the cat. And then uh, we return after getting our cup of coffee. And we say, hey, uh, I think... Uh, Looks good to me, I'm going to save it. <laughs> and I, we exit, and then we go to do our work. Um, and we hit the net draw button. I say, let's visualize this thing. We've worked so hard at it, we didn't see the cat walk across the keyboard. We've got one mode network data, because I picked the right option this time. But what's going to happen? Well. Let's find out. Okay, what happens isn't immediately clear. It looks pretty similar. Let's let's take a look at the layout and let's put it in a circle so that we can see the changes. Very subtle, looks very similar to what I showed you before, doesn't it? And yet, it's not. What's missing here? There's no arrowhead from Alice to Bert. What's missing here? I have to bring it over here so you can see the lack of an arrowhead. No arrowhead from Bert to Donna. When the cat walks across the keyboard, the cat types in nonsense. Um, this is, may have happened to you. It's not entirely hypothetical. It's happened to me. The result is that you get an inaccurate sociogram, an inaccurate social network. It's not right. Uh, and... So what can we do? Well, we can fix it, of course, by going back in and 
we can open that back up. You notice that in between when I saved it, UCINet looked at that text and it said, what does that mean? Well, UGK, JK or IJL, those pieces of text didn't really mean anything. So UCINet says, oh, I, I bet that must mean it's just, just missing information. So let's just make that blank. I noticed a few of you did have blank matrix entries, and as a result, you had tiny little errors in your spreadsheet. Look for these. The solution is really not high tech, it's low tech. You have to look at your uh, matrix and double check to make sure that it's good before you go. There are some other possibilities that are out there. Uh, one of the possibilities, and this is another possibility that people uh, often found in, I found in their work, is that there would be an extra row. Sometimes it would be filled with blanks. Sometimes it would be filled with zeros. There was no corresponding column. Uh, in a variation of this, sometimes people would have a missing column, one that accidentally got deleted. What happens when you do this? It's garbage. There's nobody else actually there, and yet you have an extra row. Well, if you look at the dimensions, you notice now we have six rows and five columns. UCINet is going to try to, in its net draw module, make sense of it again. And it's going to say, hang on, you're telling me you want a regular UCINet network, right? And that it's one mode data, right? But it's going to look at the file. And it's going to say, hang on, when I see this, I see something different from a one-mode network. I see two things. First of all, I see an extra node. Look at that. There it is, an extra node. What is that extra node all about? It's the row there. It says, I see there's someone you haven't labeled, uh, and they're not tied to anybody, all these zeros. But they exist. You said so, says the computer. And second of all, if there's a different number of rows and columns, then what does that equal? It equals a two-mode network. So NetDraw thinks, trying to make sense of nonsense, as computer programs often do, it says, hang on, uh, this must be a two-mode network because only two-mode networks can have different numbers of rows and columns. So Here's your two-mode network. A number of you turned in work that showed this. It was multicolored, indicating different kinds of objects. That's clue number one. Clue number two, two Berts, two Alices, two Carls, two Earls. It's nonsense. It doesn't reflect anything that's going on in reality. And yet there it is. You can get garbage out if you put garbage in. And it's very easy, as I, I hope I've just shown you, to put garbage in. Sometimes it's a cat walking across your keyboard. Um, sometimes it's that you choose the wrong option when you are running your analysis. Uh, sometimes it can be an extra row, even if the row is empty. UCINet will try to interpret it. So what do we do? We load our data and we look at it every time before we send it on and we say, hang on, how many rows and columns are there? Do I have all zeros and ones or is there nonsense in there? Are there any missing cells in there? We always look at those. We look at every procedure that we run and if we see an error, we fix it. In this case, you can fix an extra, the existence of an extra row by selecting a cell in that row, hitting edit and delete rows. Now, just to be sure, I'm going to head over to dimensions, and I'm going to say, no, 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 no. this is a five-row, five-column network, and I'm going to save it. Then, when I visualize my data, I'm going to get my line again, most likely, because this is a special kind of network in which people know each other serially. Al knows Betty, knows who knows Cleo, who knows so on. Um, and, and they seem to be organized in a line. That's not so important. What's really important is that whatever the structure is, 
I get it right. And now that I've fixed my errors, I look at the visualization. If I don't like the layout, I can change the visualization. Uh, I'm going to make it a circle again. And now I'm done. And I can very carefully look at the sociogram. Does it make sense to me? Is everything there that should be there? Are there odd colors? Do people's names appear twice? If not, it looks pretty good. It, it makes sense based on what I know about the, the network itself. Then I'm ready to go. Uh, if I get quality out, uh, then I am pretty sure that I had, had quality going in. If I make sure when I'm putting information in that there's quality going in, I'm more likely to get quality out. In the next half of class, you're going to be working with real-world data. Uh, you're going to be answering real questions about what goes on in our social world and the patterns of connections between people, the patterns of affiliations we have. When you do this work, and people do this real work for a living, uh, both as academics and as nonprofit organization or for-profit corporate workers. Uh, when you do that work, you want to make sure you get it right. Always be sure to check what comes out. Always be sure to check what goes in. So you don't want garbage, because that only gives you a garbage result. Have a good week, and best of luck looking at your real-world data. <laughs>